The entrance antiphon for today, Wednesday, the Feast of St. John Chrysostom, page 233. Those who are wise will shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, the strength of those who hope in you, who willed that the Bishop St. John Chrysostom should be illustrious by his wonderful eloquence and his experience of suffering, grant us, we pray, that instructed by his teachings, we may be strengthened through the example of his invincible patience through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For if you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death then the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. By these, you too once conducted yourselves when you lived in that way. But now you must put them all away. Anger, fury, malice, slander, and obscene language out of your mouths. Stop lying to one another. Since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge, in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. 
Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is compassionate toward us. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom, your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is compassionate toward all of us. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and leap for joy. Your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Raising his eyes toward his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way, but woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. But woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we um, have the privilege of celebrating the feast day of St. John Chrysostom. And perhaps he's not as well known in the West as he ought to be, but he's regarded as the greatest preacher in the history of the church. He was the patriarch archbishop of Constantinople at the end of the fourth century. And he was so beloved in Rome um, that if you go, if you've ever been in St. Peter's Basilica and you go around the back of the high altar into the apse, there's a very beautiful statue um, of St. Peter's chair that was done by Bernini. And there are four doctors of the church that are holding up the legs of the chair. And one of them is St. John Chrysostom. He started his life in Antioch in Syria, and um, he, he was a, when he became a priest, he was incredibly popular as a preacher. And so it was not very long before he was lured to Constantinople, which was by now, Constantinople is the head of the Roman Empire, um, because Rome itself is slowly falling under the rubble because of invasions. And so he became the cardinal or the patriarch archbishop of Constantinople in late 397. And he only was archbishop there for just a little over five years because he went in preaching the gospel and the people in Constantinople, at least the ones in power, didn't take to it too well. Whenever you put money and power together, um, it often is not a good thing. And certainly that was the case in Constantinople at the end of the, at the, end of the fourth century. When, when John got there, he was immediately criticized by his clergy because 
He no longer threw lavish dinner parties the way his predecessor did. He had to have a council to depose six bishops who had gotten their jobs by simony. Basically, they bought their way to the top. And we have several sermons um, that, that he gives that I will give you just a little sample, just a, just a little taste of what he was up against. I, he reminds me so much of these brave priestly souls today that stand up and speak the truth to a culture that is very much not Christian. So today we read our lesson from Colossians where Paul teaches us to set our mind on things that are above and not things that are on earth. And John Chrysostom preached a sermon on that occasion. Um, I think we're all, we're all over the age of 21 here, so I can, I can speak to this, okay? He excited the, hospita the hosp hostility of the very wealthy ladies, the rich ladies of Constantinople, by condemning the fashion of using solid silver chamber pots uh, for their private um, work. While the poor made in the image of God shiver and hunger in the cold, these ladies think they are so fine that their excrement merits privileged treatment. One man defecates in a silver pot, another has not so much as a crust of bread. What senselessness, what madness. Now if a priest preached that way today, whoa. Um, another occasion, he offended the rich widow Eugrafia um, in one of his sermons when um, he said basically to all the women in the, in the congregation that day, they were very wealthy ladies that loved to do a lot of makeup and fix their hair up fancy. Time has made you old women, so why do you take forceful measures to rejuvenate your appearance, arranging kiss curls above your foreheads as the tarts do, shocking other decent women, so as to give a false impression of youthfulness to the people you meet. Can you imagine how that would go over? And his, probably the, his greatest enemy was the Empress Eudoxia. Um, and it was, it was um, late in his time, I mean, it was just a few years later and he was now about ready to get kicked out because he was offending all these rich people. But the, the coup de grace, the thing that absolutely did it, was um, in 403, uh, Sunday in November of 403, John was celebrating the sacred liturgy in the Church of, um, of the Holy Wisdom, one of the great churches in Constantinople. You can still see it today. And while he was celebrating the divine liturgy, there was noise outside because the empress, is, the empress was having a ceremony to um, erect her new statue. And it, all the yelling and screaming um, interrupted the liturgy. And John complained loudly that this was an insult to the sacred liturgy. And he ridiculed that ceremony. And in the acrimony that followed, the empress, Eudoxia, basically began to work to get him thrown out of town. And John, in reply, said, um, by comparing the empress to the wife of Herod, who demanded John's head on a platter, John the Baptist's head on a platter, he said, again, Herodias raves. Again, she is troubled. Again, she dances. Again, she demands John's head. Well, it wasn't very long before John was, was thrown out of Constantinople and sent into exile. 
And he first went into um, a place called Komona in um, Armenia, which would be in far eastern Turkey. And for several years, he lived there in exile. But because he was so well known and so appreciated for the way he could teach the scriptures, people would make pilgrimages from all over to go see him. And the powers that be decided, well, we're going to have to get rid of him. We gotta send him further. And so they exiled him to a place that is so remote on the far eastern side of the Black Sea. And as he was making that journey, he died. And, um, and his last words that were recorded as he lay dying on the road, glory to God for all things. And he died and he was buried right there. Then Eudoxia, he, she passes away. Her son now, Theodosius II, takes over. And he feels guilty the way his parents treated John. And so he asks that the relics of John be brought back to Constantinople. And John's biographer records this moment when the ship came into the harbor of Constantinople. The emperor was there at the dock and he got down on his knees and he kissed the remains and he asked John to forgive him and to forgive his family. And then they brought his relics to the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople. That's the cathedral where, they, where those relics were solemnly placed on the cathedral, the bishop's chair. Um, as a sign that we are returning you to your rightful place here. Um, it's such an extraordinary story. And um, it, it really left an impression on me um, not so long ago. It was, it, the year was, um, the year was, was um, gosh, where was it? Okay, 2004. November 27, 2004. Um, it was a moment in Rome that people talked about for years. Pope St. John Paul II was visited by the ecumenical patriarch of the Eastern Church and he returned the relics of John Chrysostom, which the Crusaders had taken to the West and returned them and, um, and they were then brought back to Constantinople. But it was one of the great ecumenical moments. Um, and there's a beautiful film that's made about it called Return the Relics. That's, if you, you could possibly find it online. But this is the man that we're celebrating today, John Chrysostom, who loved the Lord Jesus Christ so much. And he was so passionately committed to proclaiming the truth that nothing, absolutely nothing, would stand in the way of his saying what Jesus would have him say. And we pray that for all of us that we may be loyal and courageous disciples like him. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our helper who sustains and sanctifies our life. With confidence to our Father's unfailing love, we asked him for the church that through her the good news of God's love may be proclaimed to the poor and to all in need of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. That God's bounteous kindness will transform the hearts and minds of those who govern and legislate. Let us pray to the Lord. That the dignity of human life will be protected by law throughout our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the conversion of all whose lives are dominated by envy, violence, or hatred. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for a special blessing on husbands and wives. That their marriages will witness to the goodness of the gospel and strengthen their families. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to live with deeper gratitude for the Lord's goodness to us and to be free from envy, discouragement, and bitterness, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, thank you for countless proofs of your gentleness. May we always praise your name for its goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present in commemoration of St. John Chrysostom be pleasing to you, O Lord, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Chrysostom, you bid your church rejoice So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, Becket, our pastor, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst speak under my roof, but only say. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God.
We now pray the prayer after communion found on the card in your pews. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that these mysteries we have received as we commemorate St. John Chrysostom may confirm us in your love and enable us to be faithful in confessing your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.